Okay, well, welcome back to another episode of Mr. Rotter's Neighborhood. Uh, the other day, we uh, we showed you how to transfer your gasket uh, opening size from your timing cover to uh, your oil filter housing and booster plate and uh, subsequent high pressure or high volume oil pump uh, separator plate. Um, today, we're going to get into modifying the timing cover. Uh, there's some very difficult shots here with my cell phone trying to do this with my hands and hold things and uh, flashlights and all that but uh, as you'll see in the video it's um, you know bear with me I, I'm trying to get you the best angle possible so you can see what's going on but uh, if you have any questions you know put them in the in the comments section and I'll try to answer them as best as possible uh, our luckily the lights over our uh, our fabrication table have burned out so Hopefully the lighting is decent enough that you can get a decent video. Uh, but uh, I'll flip the camera around and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I brought the roll and if you remember in the previous video I told you I just like to find one that barely fits in there. Uh, maybe a little bit sloppy. It could be just a hair bigger because you're, you're going to take it out anyway. But this one gives us plenty of room and what I'm shooting for is I, I like to do this hole last. The, the feed hole out of the pump to the, the timing cover, I like to do last. I like to take these small rolls like this, and then what you do is you, you put them inside here and you angle it a bit with the drill on the inside and try to radius that 100 degree turn in there, or whatever it is, 90 degrees. I have no idea what the number is, but we're gonna try to take her out right now. All right, one thing to watch for is you don't want the end of your drill catching this housing at all, right? Because if it mars this housing, this is your sealing surface for your gasket. If this thing becomes untrue, uh, and that's why after I'm done with this, normally I put it on a stone and I try to chew everything up afterwards. But if you're doing any work beforehand, you always want to do this first foremost. We've got it opened up quite a bit. Let's see if I can get a longer mandrel. Okay, so we switched to a longer mandrel just so we can get a little bit more angle on it without the drill getting close to the surface that we're concerned about. All right, now I got it opened up and if you look down through the hole on a B housing, you can actually see it goes two directions. Um, it splits off and goes to the oil feed line here and then the lower part of the channel actually goes to your bypass here. Now this will have to be opened up and cleaned um, you don't necessarily have to take it all completely apart. I, I like to push the, the bypass little door back and then you clean it all out with some brake clean um, and water and then use compressed air to blow all this dust out because it will collect a lot of that dust in there. But we do have it opened up enough now that I can try to follow the top channel which is going to take quite a bit of material out of the top but to do the top you need one of these rolls and it has to be a conical shaped roll. That's the only way you're gonna make that turn. But the only reason I started with this one is you have to have enough room to get this conical roll down in there to try to bend it up and around that turn. Once it gets caught on the edge of that turn, the sanding roll here will take care of any of the clearance issues that you have, and it'll keep opening it up. All right, as you can see, I took the end right off of it, which is fine. That's normal because you're, you're forcing it down through that channel. Okay, but there is plenty of material to be chewing up in here um, because if you look, this, uh, the feed hole to the timing cover is this channel here. What you're trying to cut is like right here, okay? But it's probably a quarter of an inch uh, in there or a little bit more. So you have plenty of room to take quite a bit out. Just go slow and be very careful with what you're doing.
right, as you can see, huge mess. Went through a lot of rolls. Uh, they're not very high quality to begin with. <laughs> but I also broke a mandrel, which is apparently is not as high quality as the roll. Uh, but there's quite a bit of aluminum. I even had to get the uh, rotary file out and open up the the, uh, the output from the timing cover into the uh, oil filter housing. Just needed a lot of material removed. So I found it was a lot easier just to get the, uh, I, I didn't even think this mandrel was gonna fit in there, but it does, and then it opened it up quite a bit. And I'll show you the finished product here in a second. As you can see, the light burned out or went out above me, which is kind of weird because it isn't LED. It's trash. We'll go over to the table and that way you can look down the side of it and see what's going on. Okay. Here's our oil filter housing. I know. So our completed product is this. Here is this opening and you can see there's still marker uh, pretty much around the area. I didn't want to all the way encroach upon it or past. I was afraid I was going to nick it up pretty bad. It's uh, it's easy to go beyond what you really need. Um, I could probably spend another 20 minutes and take a little bit more material out actually. But uh, as you can see, right here, it's getting very close to that cavity. And that's what was concerning me the most. Uh, I am gonna have to sit down and I have a, uh, I have a stone that I work these on uh, with some WD-40. And like I said, this marring is not a big deal. You can see it's been way overheated and was way too tight at one point, but, uh, and it has a lot of miles. So there's probably a lot of slop on it, but, uh, I am putting the booster plate on here, so it is going to square that whole surface up. That surface, it becomes irrelevant. Um, it's just these openings here that are the most important. You can't see down in there. So let me get the flashlight. So remember, it's the top channel. The bottom one is the spring for the bypass, which you can actually finally see now that I got a light on it. The top channel, you can't quite see too well. Uh... You can see it a lot better when I put the flashlight up through the top hole, but she's opened up quite a bit. Let's see if you can see something this way. You can see where I got into the uh, uh, the metal on the, uh, the filter. Okay. So that's all opened up pretty big. Um, the radius turn is, I've taken a lot out of it. Uh, I ended up running out of sandpaper rolls. I probably could have taken more, um, but I was a little, I was starting to get a little concerned uh, because I was running out of materials. I wanted to finish it up. So uh, you can see where I radius that turn quite a bit. There's probably a good half an inch taken out of it. Um, to make that turn a little bit more square. All right, well, other than that, I have my light burned out over there, my fabrication table, I don't know why, it's an LED, it should have never happened. Uh, but uh, there we are for the day. I'm probably gonna clean that up, and then I'm gonna have to sit down and I got my stone and hone that out, or hone it somewhat flat. I make sure there's no imperfections in the areas that we and clean it up. And uh, matter of fact, I'll probably take a stone and, and copy it. All right.